to equation 6 or 7 to calculate the factorized matrix U, or based on this idea that I just described, you can explain equation 8. Equation 8, you can explain in terms of a picture. For example, in general, if you look in here, in general, if I want to calculate what is the factorized value for uij, right there, I want to find out what is the value of uij. Well, according to the equation that we developed earlier, this is the off-diagonal term, so you can see the value of uij can be computed as equal to the original value, aij, and then minus the summation of the product uki times ukj, and the subscript k here go from 1 to i minus 1. And the whole thing here divide by uii. That is a formula that we learned from the previous equation. But this minus the summation of the product, in this picture, it just means this uij and ki times this term right here. And then minus the product of this times this term. And then minus the product of this term times this term. And minus the product of this term times this term. And at the end, we divide by uii, which is this term. So this equation can be interpreted very easily. It's just like the picture show it to you here. So if you want to factorize the term uij, that means you need to look at column i, and you need to look at column j. And that is exactly what we show in here. This is column I, and this is column J. All right. So the next thing is, use, what happens if you want to calculate UII, which is equal to the diagonal term? Suppose we want to calculate that. So how does it work? Well, in th the formula say it will be the same thing as the previous formula. The only difference is you let I equal to J. So it becomes AII, I equal to J, minus the same summation, UKI times UKJ, but J is the same thing as I, so it's the same thing as UKI. And then instead of divide by UII, you will take the square root of this guy. Okay? And UKI times UKI is the same thing, let's like say, UKI square. So, pictorially what, pictorially, what does that mean? It means if you want to calculate the term UII, you need to make use of column I and make use of column I again. So that means the summation of this product, for this case, will be this term square and then minus this term square, minus this term square, minus this term square. So that's what it means. Okay? So now, because you can see earlier, we have a square root operation involved during the Cholesky factorization phase. And that's why we insist that the matrix A, the given matrix A, has to be symmetric and positive definite. Well, the first one, it is easy. Everybody know what is symmetrical means. A matrix A is called symmetric if we have the condition A, I, J is the same thing as A, J, I. That is the meaning of symmetric. Now, how about the meaning of Positive definite, what does that mean? Well, one way, there are two different ways you can test to see if the matrix is positive definite or negative definite or what. And the first test is based on checking the determinant of every submatrix. And I will show you some examples to demonstrate that. 
The second idea to prove that the matrix is positive definite or not is just by picking an any an arbitrary vector y different from zero and then performing the triple product of y transpose a y. And if this, tri this triple product is always positive, then we say the matrix A is positive definite. So let's take a look at a quick example. Suppose I give you a matrix A is given like that. And we want to find out, is this matrix A symmetric, positive, definite, or not? Well, first of all, it is very easy to recognize that the matrix A should be symmetrical. And the reason is because we do have AIJ equal to AJI in this case. For example, A12 is equal to minus 1. A21 equal to minus 1. They are the same. A23 is the same as A32. You see? So... This is symmetrical. And likewise, A13 is equal to A31. So because of that reason, the matrix A is symmetrical. So how about the next test, which is a little bit more interesting? Uh, how do we find out that the matrix A is positive definite? How do we know that the matrix A is positive definite? Well, the first test we do is we take the determinant of this one by one submatrix. Obviously, the determinant of that is equal to 2, and 2 is positive, so that's good. Then, we will take the determinant of the 2 by 2 submatrix. Well, as you can see on the next slide, the determinant of that 2 by 2 is equal to 3, and that again is also positive. And then finally, if you go to the previous slide, we take the determinant of the 3 by 3 submatrix here. So when you take the determinant of this 3 by 3 submatrix, the answer is 1, which is positive again. Because the determinant of every submatrix are all positive, now we say the matrix is positive definite. So that's the way we prove that the matrix A is given to you in this example is, is symmetric, positive, definite. How about if we, based on the, another criteria, another criteria B that we mentioned earlier, remember we say we just pick up any arbitrary vector y, let's say have three components in this example, and assuming this vector y is different from zero, that's, that's the requirement. Any vector is good except don't let it to be a zero vector. So then the next step will be, let's try to figure out this triple product. Well, we all know in this example, the matrix A, the dimension is a 3 by 3. The vector Y, the dimension here is 3 by 1. Y transpose, the dimension is 1 by 3. So the triple product, Y transpose AY, is supposed to be equal to a scalar. And the detail is here. After we multiply all of these three matrices, we will get the answer of that triple product Y transpose AY will be equal to this much after you do all the matrix multiplication. And with a little bit of observation, it is very easy to see that that equation right there is the same thing as presented in this way. Now, if you look at the, the scalar presented in this way, you can see every term here has a square, there's a square, and there's a square. So that means this scalar here has to be greater than or equal to 0 for any vector y. And because of that reason, we say the matrix A is symmetric, positive, definite. So there are two different ways to verify the matrix is positive definite. The first way is to check the determinant, and the second way is to check based on the product y transpose a y for any non-zero vector y. Okay, let us say step number one, it is done, which is factorization phase. And if you remember, the equation we start with is ax equal to b. Ax equal to b.
after the first step is done, we already replaced a matrix A with the product of U transpose times the matrix U. Okay? So now, that's why now what you have is equation 9, which say U transpose times U times X is equal to B. The next step we can do is we say, let, let us consider the product of U times X. This is a matrix U times a vector X. So together, we give it a new name. We call it a vector Y. We would call a vector Y. And that is exactly shown in equation 10, which say U times X, we call it is a vector Y. Now, if that is the case, then you can see equation 11, which has become very obvious. Equation seven, e 11, you can see basically come from equation 9. Because you see you have a U transpose, that is here. And then U times X, which we call it Y, that is here. And then on the right-hand side, the vector B that we have here. Now, if you look at equation 11, don't forget the matrix U, we already know it by the end of step one. That means we already did the factorization phase, so we know the matrix U already. The vector B, the right-hand side, is given. And therefore, we should be able to calculate the intermediate unknown vector Y. One thing you have to be keep in mind is this. U is an upper triangular matrix, and therefore the transpose of that the transpose of U should be a lower triangular matrix, as you can see from the next slide. You see, you have U transpose times the vector Y is equal to the vector B from the previous slide. U transpose will be a lower triangular matrix, as you can see in here. Now, if you look at equation 12, it is very easy to solve for the vector y, very easily. As a matter of fact, the way to calculate the vector y is first by looking at the first equation in here of equation 12. Look at the first equation part of equation 12. Based on that first equation, you can see we have u11 times y1 equal to b1. And from that, we can solve for the first unknown y1. After you solve for the first unknown y1, then we go back to the previous slide. You say, OK, now look at the second equation. Now look at the second equation. From the second equation, basically, you have u12 times y1 plus u22 times y2 plus 0 times y3 equal to b2. And therefore, from the second equation, this is what you got, the one I just read for you. From that equation, 2, and because you already know y1 already, and therefore, you should be able to solve for y2 from the second equation. And similarly, if you go back to the previous slide, if you look at the next equation, which is the third equation, the last one, what do we have? U13 times Y1 plus U23 times Y2 plus U33 times Y3 equal to B3. So from the third equation, what we can solve for the unknown Y3 is shown in equation 15. In general, for any equation Y sub J, where this J could be this subscript J could be 1 or 2 or 3, OK? The f general formula is given to calculate the unknown vector yj is given according to equation 16. So 